Uh, here we're going to run a simple, uh, two simple uh, Monte Carlo simulations of uh, Black Skull's option pricing. Now the first method is by the R-Metrix team, the late dear Tom Wirtz in particular, and it uses their libraries F-Options and F-Basics, um, which we will run. Oops, and uh, we just go back, I just run that. Uh, the uh, Monte Carlo option is a function. For those who are new to functions in R, um, it's really the core of R programming. It's a functional programming language, as opposed to really uh, objective-oriented language or uh, modular language or whatever. Um, of course, with Python and Visual Basic, uh, you can turn them, you know, user-defined functions are important, but uh, they're of paramount importance in programming in R. As you can see there, the parameters. Delta T is the daily change, and it puts a heading it iterates, it outputs the headings. Um, goes through a for loop, generates a random number. More generating of random numbers. And it returns a value. And uh, it takes another function which is a Brownian motion or Wiener path, which generates a uh, uh, a Brownian stock value. And the payoff is another function, which uh, computes the payoff. Uh, you know, um, not sure. If you're familiar with options, you'll know that payoff is... Um, yeah, core minus uh, stock or, or stock minus core. Uh, core minus exercise or exercise minus call and stock price regarding whatever, um, whether it's a put or a call. See, it's got it there. The exponential is to exponentiate the value. And here is the values. It, but I didn't bother um, putting it in a real option price for this one because I wanted to check that it was a, that I got the same result as um, the one that was generated by the uh, metrics team uh, and once you know it does produce exactly the same results once you know you got that you can then change this to your heart's content um, I'll put this on uh, our pubs on my channel and um, you can play with it to your heart's extent. And uh, I gather we'll, we'll just run it. Um, we'll get down here and um, I don't think I have to run the others. I'll, I'll just see. Just run that. Um. All right, and as you can see, there it is, Monte Carlo option. You know what the red line was? Uh, all right. Must oh yeah, that's the Monte Carlo price, five point oh oh one 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 eight. And you can see that it it gradually converges to a Monte Carlo price um, after 20 trials. Um, but if you know anything about um, the random tosses of a coin, uh, it varies a lot to get there. Big drop, and then it slowly converges. All right, we'll move on to the next model. It's quite useful. Um, 
for seeing possibilities. Now, mine was uh, different. I generated four four degrees of freedom t dis truncated t distribution values of the uh, Wiener stock or uh, Brownian motion stock value. Um, and then just generally printed out four different option values. Um, suppose, and I've got quantum mode because I downloaded, I use it for downloading current stock prices. It's just like every day you want to see what are the range of possibilities uh, or a possible range of possibilities because really the market is random. Uh, I'm not saying it's efficient, but it is random. It's a bit of a trick to the... Uh, uh, professors that came up with the efficient random theory, or efficient, efficient, efficient model theory, or efficient market theory, because just because it's random doesn't mean it's efficient. It's a bit of a twist of um, logic there. It's only random because of the huge number of interacting agents with different minds. Um, Whereas efficient market theory says that it's um, efficient because all the minds converge on the price. No, I don't think so. The price is random because thousands of different individual minds compete on a price. Um, like a voting me mechanism, um, at the end of the day, uh, the most popular price rules. It's not necessarily the most efficient. You know, there's, we're running the random, the, the uh, random t function from um, Trunkus. I oh, know from uh, the, the the norm disk library, I think it is, or, is, or it must be just from the basic library. We run random, random t variable. Put the dates. Run get symbols. Put it in the spy return. Return, we put the parameters, return equals sum, dev, dev equals stand D, square root of bol, equals dev times square root 250, day equals 1 over 250 current, tail, spy, close, day return, etc. I guess, which is the function plus the random number. Expected is random plus function guess, and then we run the G black goals model and apply the expected function and we get four random prices that's four and you'll see the scatter is quite interesting it's because it's truncated it's quite realistic it's not extreme but I found over time that a uh, as a heuristic a T distribution with four degrees of freedom approximates a real stock distribution of most of the big, like QQQ, SPY, most of the big ETFs, uh, IWM, and it approximates quite a number of other stocks too. They're definitely not normally distributed or log normally distributed. They probably are a Couchy or a Levy distribution, but they're pretty intractable for working with. Whereas a, a standard T distribution, uh, which is roughly approximates a lot of distributions, is useful to work with. You, know, you can manipulate it. Um, let's see what the price was for the first example. Two dollars. And for the second example, it was four dollars. As you can see, 479 was the stock there, uh, and 80 cents. Let's see what the first one was. 490. Well, it was a put actually, so it's really out of the money there. Slightly bit of value. And the third, the stock value was generated at 476, so this should be quite pricey. Six dollars. And the fourth value, the stock is 477. Uh, be an intermediate value. I oh, know, still quite pricey at five dollars. Anyway, that's a look at some simple methods of generating uh, random Monte Carlo simulated option prices. Be more complex and uh, uh, 
standard method that is used for implementing Monte Carlo simulation from the Armetrics team, and a novel approach of mine, which I just run get a broad spectrum of where prices could head um, under worst case scenarios. Okay, I'll stop it there, thanks, signing off.